Hello and welcome to episode 56 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. <clears throat> this is Brandon. <laughs> this is Brad. This is Nick. What we're going to do at the beginning of every podcast is say a famous quote, or maybe it doesn't have to be famous, but a quote uh, from a movie, video game, or lyric from a music, and the other person has to guess it. So since I'm going first, Nick and Brad has to guess what movie it's from. It's never over! <laughs> I think that's Rocky. Rocky. Rambo. Oh! Because oh. uh, the sheriff in town is like, the war is over, and then Rambo says, it's never over! <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, remember that Lipton iced tea commercial? Yeah. That's what threw me off, because he was saying that to his trainer. Yeah, he was like, yeah, that's what threw me off, too. Tricky. So you have some treasure? Yeah, how about you? I do. How many items do you have? Two. I have three. Oh, no. I do. All right. All right, so let's let's see. Let's see it. <laughs> Boss, what's your first treasure? Mega Man Star Force 2 for DS? Yep. How much is that worth? 12 bucks. But it's 16.99 price tag. Five ninety nine. <laughs> okay. I didn't even have to do the dimple switcheroo on this one. I was just wondering, like, why is there another price tag on there than when it's sixteen ninety nine for it originally? Oh. So they changed the price on it. Mm-hmm. And there's another one. There's a. It's called Sauron, I think. What is it called? Yeah, Sor. Saurian, and then there's a Ninja Virgin, which is worth 13 but they wanted six ninety nine for that one. Then all the other ones they had were fourteen ninety nine. but there's a Part 5 that's worth 57 bucks loose. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Check that bad boy out. Donkey Kong Country. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Nine bucks. Wow. Got it for three ninety nine. Two ninety nine. It says two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Tight. <laughs> They wanted uh, $10 for it, like, the week prior, and then they must have, like, huh. changed it out because no one was buying it. You didn't do a switcheroo? No, it says T-Hawk right there. Oh. Uh, I don't... I, I haven't done been able to do the switcheroo yet. This one is what I've done the switcheroo on. They wanted six ninety nine for it originally. Oh. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. What's that word? Twelve. That's tight. Here's my next item. Oh, Batman Return of the Joker for Game Boy. What's that word? 11. Wow. That's tight. This one came with the two ninety nine price tag already. Didn't have to switch through it. Gunsmoke. How much? Ten. So you're at thirty-four dollars, and I'm at twenty-one. But wait. Yeah, there's more. There's I, more. I, I knew it could never be over that easily. Nothing is over. <laughs> I bet you thought this is a normal alarm clock right here. <laughs> I did. <laughs> What is this? Hidden treasure. Is this worth a lot? $15. Are you serious? I saw a ton of these at the one, uh, other one. Is it for that cheap, though? Yeah. Because at the one in downtown, they had them for $14.99, $15.99, then I found one for $3.99. Cool. It's Metroid Prime Hunters for DS. Awesome. So that puts me over the top. Okay. Uh -oh. What is Get to the five? chopper! <laughs> top five this week? Action heroes. Yes. How many characters from Dragon Ball Z do you have on your list? <laughs> Four. Oh, man. You beat me. I only have two. What about you, Nick? Zero. Oh. That's gay. <laughs> so let's roll to see who goes first. And I don't really have four. I have no Dragon Ball Z characters on my list. Brandon gets 
four, Nick gets 12, and I get 11. So it goes Nick, Brad, then Brandon. All right. So my number five, and I just did this list, actually. I was thinking about it. Uh, I just got back from a camping trip just a couple of hours ago, and I was thinking about my top five pretty much the whole time while I was there. Without internet access, it's a little bit difficult to do research and make sure that you're not missing anyone. But this is my top five, so apologies if it's uh, not to your satisfaction. <laughs> we can come up with a consensus at the end again is, anyway. Is your number five Razor Ramon? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that bad. <laughs> hey. My number five is Han Solo, played hmm. by Harrison Ford from the Star Wars series. Han Solo doesn't care what the odds say. Han has wit and he's charming, even while being an insulting smartass. He's a smooth-talking space cowboy gunslinger and he's quite the ladies' man. When Leia tells him that she loves him just before being frozen in carbonite, his response? I know. <laughs> that's hella tight. <laughs> so that's my number five, Han Solo. I have a sound bit for two of mine. Tight. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I got a text. <laughs> Who do you think your text was from? <laughs> oh, idiot. <laughs> Daniel LaRusso from... Uh, it's not Robocop? No, it's not Robocop. <laughs> That was my text alert. <laughs> uh, Daniel LaRusso, who else could take out the likes of the whole Cobra Kai unit in the All-Valley Karate Tournament? Daniel LaRusso <laughs> can with the help of Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. it's my number five. So uh, on these, I'm going to give you the the uh, person who played the actor, and you're going to you're gonna have to guess which person mm -hmm. I did. I like that. I'm going to yeah. do that from now on. I was, gonna, I was thinking about doing that, but... There's a couple that wouldn't work for that. That's the fun of it. Arnold Schwarzenegger is my number five. Mm. Predator. No, I mean, obviously Dutch. the character's name, not Predator. But. <laughs> I'm going to guess uh, Mr. Kimball. <laughs> <laughs> Retired Delta Force operative Colonel John Matrix is informed by his former superior Major General Franklin Kirby that all... Uh, the other members of the unit have been killed by unknown mercenaries. Commando. Commando. <laughs> it is revealed that Matrix is needed to carry out a political assassination for a South American dictator named Arius, who wishes to lead a military coup in his home country of Valverde. Arius, who was d disposed by Matrix in the course of one of his missions, had chosen the colonel because this current president trusts his implicity. I, I put that on my number four. Did you? Yeah. From Fernando. The, uh, the whole scene when he's like, we're going shopping. That's what I have down here. I said my favorite part, they're going shopping in quotation marks. When he goes and gets all the gear and the, the face paint and the grenades <laughs> and the rocket launcher. Oh, man. The bazooka. Um, I, I had also had on here when he throws the pipe through Bennett. Oh, man. He says, let off some steam, Bennett. <laughs> So that was my number four as well. My number five. My number four is portrayed by Mel Gibson. Oh, man. Any guesses? Riggs. Riggs. Yes. Martin Riggs from the Lethal Weapon series. He's over the edge and he pushes the envelope in every situation. His tactic is to throw his opposite opposition off with his awkward and wacky behavior. He always bangs the broad, and he has a cool dog named Sam, and he lives on a sweet beach in a nice mobile <laughs> home. It's my number four, Martin Riggs, from Le the Lethal Weapon series. My number four was John Matrix. Oh, <laughs> With, um, what's her name in it? Alyssa Milano? Mm -hmm. You know he hit that ass. <laughs> At 12? <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger doesn't fuck around. <laughs> he doesn't, Aries is just a number. Age is just a number. She is um, that. What was that the one chick? Mexican chicken? maid. The... <laughs> housekeeping. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not housekeeping. Dick keeping. <laughs> 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 
Number four on my list, Jean Claude Van Damme. What's his, what's his name? Like Bronx or something like that? Frank Dukes? I, uh, I think it's Kurt Sloan. A plague known as the living death cripples a civilization already ruined by anarchy, genocide, and starvation. <laughs> Pearl Prophet volunteers for the dangerous courier mission in this movie, Cyborg. <laughs> Cyborg is a tight movie. Have you seen it? No. <laughs> it's awesome. It's hella tight. Uh, I... His name's Marshall Strat uh, in the movie, but basically he's a human that's been turned into a cyborg. And the the main reason I picked this guy is because the whole, the universe he's in is just so dystopic, and it's just a fun watch. So for my list, I I decided that every character on my list would have a series of movies because I figured if the character was really as good as we think that it is. There would be other movies made for it. There's a cyborg too. Is there a cyborg too? Not with Van Damme. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number three is played by Sigourney Weaver. It's a pretty easy one. Galaxy Quest. <laughs> <laughs> Ripley. Yeah, of course. A Ellen Ripley from the Alien series. She uh, at the very beginning she refused to allow crew members onto her ship after one member had been attacked by an alien parasite. Some douchebag went over her head, and then the alien takeover began. She adopted Newt as her child and risked her life by entering the belly of the beast to rescue Newt. She was a badass. She was in that movie. Oh, yeah, definitely. So that's my number three is Ellen Ripley. My number three is going to be the T-800 oh, from Terminator oh, 2. Heck, yeah. Reprogrammed by John Connor in the future to save his former self as a child. He was able to stop the T-1000 when he statistically had no chance. He even said that in the movie, something like, There's no way I could kill this guy, but he does. <laughs> by the end of the movie, he's got his skin torn off and you can see the robot underneath. That movie's just so awesome. For sure. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen T2 by now. <laughs> oh, I have a fun fact about Van Damme. Do you know what his uh, first credited role is? Wasn't it in the um, No Retreat, No Surrender? No. What, it, what was it? it? It was in a movie called Monaco Forever, and he played Gay Karate Man. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what made him Gay Karate Man. <laughs> Sucking dicks or something? <laughs> <laughs> A dojo that has glory holes in the bathroom. Uh -oh. Number three on my list, Keanu Reeves. Mm. Neo. Gotta be Neo. Could be Speed Guy, though. <laughs> I don't know. Gay man. speed man. <laughs> <laughs> it is Neo. Uh, he's a uh, uh, Anderson's hacker alias. Neo uh, is an anagram of one, who he ultimately turns out to be. Such a badass. The character development and becoming just this nobody and turning into the one who is going to stop uh, the machines, which he eventually does in the third one. A lot of people don't like Matrix Revelations, but I thought it was an awesome movie. Part two was okay, reloaded, but part three blew it out of the water. The first one was still the best one. Though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. You know, uh, Nick Cage turned down the, this role because of family obligations. No. Can you imagine Nick Cage as Neo? That'd be awesome. <laughs> Both Brad Pitt and Val Kilmer declined, and um, Johnny Depp, it was between Johnny Depp and Keanu Reeves, and then the... Wachowskis uh, finally gave it to Keanu Reeves. Bruce Willis. Oh, John McClane. For sure. That's John my McClane. number two. Yep. John McClane from the Die Hard series. He could walk on glass and he could kick some ass. Had some of the coolest catchphrases and became good friends with Carl Winslow from Family Matters. Yeah, he did. <laughs> 
He also befriended the dude from the Apple commercials and Kevin Smith to rescue his daughter. Was it his daughter? Mm-hmm. I think it was his daughter in, di- in the fourth one. Uh, he wasn't much of a, a ladies' man. He always seemed to be having issues with his ex-wife, but he had a hell of a personality and a ton of good catchphrases. So that's my number two. What do you have to say about John McClane? Without John McClane, we wouldn't have Japanese Bruce Willis. Huh? Remember that video? <laughs> Japanese Bruce Willis! And he's like... Oh, I forgot all when about he, that. I'll put it on the site. I'll put it on the, okay. the page. Uh, I think the Die Hard series kind of declined. Uh, I don't think any of them are better than the first one. Uh, the the newer ones, as Kevin Smith says about him, is that he turned into a huge douchebag, like Bruce, Bruce Willis, Willis, over the John McClane character. Like, <laughs> uh, Basically... He recut the film, and the filmmakers said, we don't want to do it this way. He's like, who else are you going to get to play John McClane? <laughs> <laughs> the first one also had uh, Al Rickman. Yeah, it did. Yeah, that was a great great role for him. Part three was awesome. I liked part three a lot. Yeah. yeah. Jeremy Irons. Samuel Jackson. Yeah. The, was, the, was there one after the fourth one? I think there was. Yeah, right. yeah, there's Live Free and Die Hard. That's, that's and the one that. I haven't seen. Yeah. The fourth one was okay, though. That, yeah. That's the one with Kevin Smith. And he was called, what, The Warlock? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Some sort of hacker or something like that. Around me? Yeah. Number two on my list, my only female that made the list, Beatrix Kiddo. Yes. A.K.A. The Bride. You know what movie that's from? <laughs> No, I don't know. <laughs> it's from Kill Bill. Oh, yeah. That's you really right. didn't know? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she was trained in the ancient art of Kung Fu. She was part of the Deadly Viper Squad. She wielded the greatest Hattori Hanzo sword. He said, this is my finest piece of work. And it was the strongest sword on Earth. So I put her on my number two. What he named the sword. Real man names the sword when he makes it. <laughs> yeah, Kill Bill Volume 1 was very good. Kill Bill 2 was, in my opinion, okay, but the whole, seeing the first one wanted me to see the second one. The, I, I wish the Ora and Ishii fight was way better. It was real short and... He chopped her, she chopped her head off. Yeah, though. but it, it could have been better. She scalped, she scalped her. her. That's all I'm saying, it could have been better. Uh, number one, Nick? Mine, too, was uh, Jonathan McLean. Oh, okay. Yeah, my number one is also Beatrix Kiddo uh, from uh, Kill Bill. Yes. <laughs> She's also known as uh, the Black Mamba. She was romantically involved with Bill, and after her early retirement from the uh, Deadly Viper Assassination Squad, Beatrix and, uh, or, or excuse me, her friends and her fiancé were murdered at the marriage rehearsal. Uh, Beatrix herself was put into a four-year coma, during which her and Bill's baby was delivered successfully. Beatrix then goes on a rampage to kill all the members of the Deadly Viper Assassination Squad, including, including Bill. So that's my number one, is Beatrix Kiddo as well. That's so tight. Here's my number one, I have a sound bit for it. Stop fucking texting me. Dude, you're fucking with my shit. <laughs> Stop fucking. <laughs> fucking I'm, not, I'm not texting you. It's, it's fucking pissing me off. It might help if I text you. <laughs> it wouldn't fucking help if you text me. <laughs> Robocop, <laughs> Alex Murphy, number one. So it would have helped if he text messaged you. No, because I wouldn't have played the theme. <laughs> um, took down the likes of Clarence Boddicker, Dick Jones, and Kane. Badass robot cop. No one takes down Kane. Robocop did. No way. K 
Kane was a drug dealer and a drug <laughs> user. All I have to say about Robocop. That's all I have to say about Robocop. That's all I have to say about Robocop. Do we want to come to a consensus top five? Oh, I still have to win number one. Oh, who cares about yours? I mean, yeah, sure. go ahead. Vin Diesel. <laughs> Faggot. <laughs> <laughs> Gay karate man. Uh, Riddick or whatever. His yes, name is. Richard B. Riddick. <laughs> he is a highly skilled predator, extremely mobile and stealthy, with a vast knowledge of how to kill almost any humanoid or monster in very a variety of ways. He's an extreme survivalist and notoriously hard to contain. You can't keep him captured for long. <laughs> he is a self-admittedly dangerous convict and murderer. Yet despite this, he has sometimes shown to perform moral or even typically heroic actions, usually against his own better judgment and survivalist nature. He's a Furian, a member of a warrior race obliterated by a military campaign that left Furia desolate and is one of the last of his kind. One of the most defining features are his eyes, a characteristic inherent in certain cast of his species, the Alpha Furians. Although he implies in Pitch Black that they were shined by a black alley surgical operation, this was a ruse. This allows <laughs> him to, I think the writers just were like, <laughs> we'll just write that out. It was a ruse. This allows him to see <laughs> in the dark with no difficulty at all, but also renders his eyes incredibly sensitive to light. He was my number one. He's also an experienced pilot, if that sways your consensus vote. To be honest, the only one I've seen is uh, Pitch Black, because that was what's called mm -hmm. Pitch Black. That's the only one I've seen, so I don't know much about him. Uh, I, I only saw that because Joe Covarrubias forced me to watch it when I was over there one Good time. job, Joe. <laughs> I've, Joe. I've seen the first one, and I think the second one. I don't really care for it. Uh, Riddick is awesome. The third one, I watched it again today. They're all great movies. Part one goes back to its roots for Pitch Black, and they're doing a fourth one. Uh, I got a few honorable mentions. Yeah. I had John McClane, uh, which Nick had said, and Kurt Sloan from Kickboxer. Ethan Matthew Hunt from Mission Impossible. Uh, Mel Gibson, but the Patriot version. <laughs> the Patriot version. Robocop. Nick Cage and probably any any movie that he does. <laughs> and Hit Girl. Oh, fuck. That's a good one. What about William Wallace? How are you going to do Patriot and not do William Wallace? I was more of a Patriot fan. Oh, what a fag. <laughs> I really wanted to put Godzilla on this list. Oh, man. But I guess he doesn't speak, so he can't really be a character. And, of course, Rambo. Yeah, he Rambo's got, he a got good one. pretty dissed by us. The only reason I didn't put him on my list is because he's so like emo in the movies. <laughs> he's always depressed and about his country not liking him, and he he's just you screw him over once, and he's just like pissed off for the rest of the series. <laughs> he even goes to live in like Taiwan, I think, in the fourth installment, mm -hmm. which was pretty fourth cool installment? when they showed the King Cobras in the beginning, but. <laughs> I haven't watched the newest Rambo yet. I can't say that I have either. It's pretty good. I have it. I just have to watch it. Is that was that like within the last decade? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, I me I remember that now, but I never watched it. So, both Brad and I had Beatrix Kiddo pretty high. I think you had her on two, two, and I had her one. Uh, Brandon, you and I had John McClane at two, right? Mm -hmm. Were there any others that we had both on the same list? John Matrix. Yeah, from Commando. Okay. And oh, I also had Carl Urban. He was the new Judge Dredd. I thought that was pretty good. That was really good. I didn't know it was him, Carl Urban, who was playing Judge Dredd either until I looked it up today. I really like Briggs. How do you guys feel? Did you I, I think I think he deserves to be on the list. You agree? That's fine as long as we could get Riddick on the list somewhere. How do you feel about that? 
He was cool in Pitch Black. <laughs> I'll allow it as number five. Okay, so we have John Matrix, Beatrix Kiddo, John McClane, uh, Martin Riggs, and something Riddick. Richard B. Riddick. <laughs> like Johnny B. Good, Richard B. Riddick. He's clearly number five. <laughs> do we want to talk about one through four? Yeah, we do. I, um, I think McClane probably should be one. I just love Quentin Tarantino movies. That's why I put Beatrix. I would, one. I would like to see McClane as number one. I would like to see Kiddo as number one. Oh, I could go either way. I, I honestly think McClane should be number one. Because but I'm biased because I love Quentin Tarantino movies. And that's the only reason why she's on the list is because of biasy. Excuse me? <laughs> Riddick is about to go off the list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, McLean, I think is he should be number one. I think so, too. Um, he, yeah. Uh, females always come second anyway when it comes to, <laughs> like, the hierarchy of life. <laughs> I don't know much about John Matrix, though. I wouldn't mind seeing Riggs at three or two. You don't like Beatrix, do you? I don't like Quentin Tarantino. I appreciate your tactics. <laughs> I think Kittle should be at number two. I mean, she has the Hattori Hanzo sword. But it's not named. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't need to have a name. That's just wishy-washy no, movie. No, that's like, oh, what's your sword name? It doesn't have one. It's a Hattori Hanzo. Well, I've got fucking Excalibur. Well, they, what they, what has more weight and power? They never said if it was named or not. Yet she they, probably they, gave it a name. Probably like Pussy Magnet. What was that thing she was driving <laughs> pussy around? Wagon. Yeah. <laughs> pussy Wagon Number Two. That's probably the name of her sword. She did take out the whole Deadly Viper Assassination Squad by herself, though. But that's just a movie. She also slayed like 120 members of the, what are the, the five? The Crazy 88. The crazy. <laughs> All right, you could put her at number three. Number three? <laughs> We're fine for number two. We got Beatrix Kiddo, John Matrix, and Martin Riggs. Obviously, Matrix is going to be four. Okay. That's quite apparent. So now we're just debating between Kiddo and Riggs for two and three? Yeah. S since I put Matrix at number four, we could do Riggs at number two. I'll <laughs> give up that sacrifice. <laughs> I'm going to try to find if uh, the blade has a, has a name. Okay, that could, that could sway my uh, decision. <laughs> okay, so we're trying to find the sword's name for Beatrix Kiddo, but I don't think she actually named it in the movie. It says, would you like a Bride Rampage sword? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I still think she needs to be at number two. Oh, man. Fight it up. Who is it, it between Riggs and... Riggs and Kiddo. The thing about Riggs... <laughs> <laughs> He's a loose cannon. <laughs> He's very crazy, suicidal. <laughs> Kiddo killed so much more people than Riggs did. It shows that she doesn't have self-control. How so? Because she killed all those people. Who were attacking her? She went looking for a fight. She went in the middle of the bar and they all attacked her. But why? Because she went to go kill Oren Ishii. Yes. I remember that scene with the... Uh... Was it Naomi Campbell, where the kids were there, and she was, like, trying to... Vivica A. Fox. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Some black actress. <laughs> Vernita Green. Yeah. That was Control. There were kids present. She wouldn't fight her with the kids present. But why couldn't she just leave well enough alone? She had her life. She had to get revenge. You why? Think, you don't think she was owed revenge? You wouldn't get revenge if they tried to kill you. That would never happen. No one will ever try to kill me. Not if... only that, but at the time, they, they she thought that they had killed her baby. Uh huh. I would have totally went and got revenge. I would love to kill people if they tried to kill me. So I'll let you, you blood letting <laughs> baboons have your number two. Fuck yeah. So Riggs is three. So we got John McClane number one, Beatrix Kiddo number two, Martin Riggs number three, Johnny Matrix number four, and Johnny B. Riddick number five. <laughs> Close enough. I like it. I like that list a lot. Cool. 
I have a jerk of the week. Oh, yeah? Yep. Who? Usually when I think of jerk of the weeks in the past, they're usually people who inconvenience me in some way, like the old people in the swimming pool, um, <laughs> the people at McDonald's who uh, like to honk at me because I'm blocking up three handicapped lanes at 5 o'clock in the morning. This entry is no exception. <laughs> Sacramento Regional Transit. Light rail. The light rail on Cordova and Folsom is horse shit. Every, it doesn't fail. Whenever I go to the light to turn left to go to the post office, that light rail is always going. Blocks off the right lane. <laughs> the, the people going straight get two green lights before I get a turn right. And it's ridiculous. <laughs> there was a light rail on Arden that used to block the shit out of me on Royal Oaks. There was a post office over there too. Hate that regional transit. Get a car, people. <laughs> <laughs> so, you really your jerk of the week is time then, because you're just bad timing. I I think it's the set <laughs> the people sitting at the station waiting for me to pull up to the light then they hit the button <laughs> because that happens every single time. <laughs> the 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 train is supposed to come every fifteen minutes. So you would think I'd get some kind of break there, but every time. I, I'll, I'll say 19 out of 20 times I get hit by the light rail. That heck of sucks. It does. It's so lame. So lame. Yeah. You hear about South Park? No, what up? They uh, signed an exclusive deal with Hulu Plus. So all their... You, you didn't hear about it? No, I'm just upset. Oh, yeah. Basically, all the like allsouthpark.com or whatever can't stream. They could only stream 30 episodes at a given time as select episodes, but Hulu has all 17 seasons on there right now. Serious? Yeah. Wait, what? What? So, who can't stream? Are you talking about like Netflix or something? No, like the the websites like allsouthpark.com or South whatever. South Park Studios. Yeah. That's the main one. And then there's like a CC one, like Comedy Central one. They can't stream all the seasons. They can only do a handful at a time. Because of their database or what? No, because Trey Parker and Matt Stone went to Hulu and made a deal. Oh. It's gay. It's pretty lame. Unless you have Hulu Plus. Yep. I think 33% of us have it. <laughs> Looks like Germany won the World Cup. Huh. You care? No. <laughs> Jeremiah cares. Oh, yeah. He's fucking German all the way. <laughs> Is he? Yeah. Fake German. <laughs> he wasn't born there. <laughs> I, uh... Had some more bubble adventures this weekend. Oh, all camping? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's when we first busted out the uh, the toy that we used for episode 55. It's called the Hurricane. Oh, man. I did a little Emma dance myself. You would think they would come up with a more clever name for a kid toy. <laughs> than Hurricane? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it says Gazillion Bubbles. And then underneath it says Hurricane. Mm. But uh, my aunt Vicky also bought the kids. Uh, my daughter Rosa and her cousin David were playing with these uh, bubbles shooting guns. Those are pretty cool too. Huh. But they didn't go nearly as fast or nearly as uh, frequent, or excuse me, uh, continuous as the uh, the hurricane That's tight. shown in episode fifty five. But it was still cool. Definitely made me think of Bubble Man from Mega Man Two. The that, bubble lead. That um, <clears throat> shock master was no joke. <laughs> the uh, intensity, we found a way to throw it on 10. And just when you turn it on, it's still at 10. <laughs> and having one pad on, on your face and one on your neck <laughs> on the same side just totally sucked. There's probably a warning on there that says, don't put on your face. <laughs> 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 Probably. <laughs> it felt like one of my tooth was going to come loose. <laughs> well, you guys have the... Or who, who's next? Is he... Think Brad, I'm next, right? Yeah. Oh, man. I think I'm going to pay for that. 
get it, do a big one like I did and invite Matty G and just shock the <laughs> shit out of him. I hope he doesn't listen to this. And uh, we could get Brian because he doesn't have any muscle on his back, so that's probably why it didn't hurt him. <laughs> now I'm just going to keep it traditional. No shocks? Oh, there'll be a lightning round. <laughs> So that'll do it for episode 56 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting.